She also is a very sensitive person that will read a thousand wonderful comments and the one negative one, she'll focus on that one. Mm. For me, I'm just like, F you, I hope you die alone in a dirty bed, you <laughs> I don't give a <laughs> They're like, kill yourself. I'm like, honey, I've been trying. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. I am Joey Nolfi with Entertainment Weekly here today chatting with the cast of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 8. Now, this next queen is absolutely someone you followed since her incredible run as a lip sync assassin on season six, one of the best in the show's history, and her illustrious career beyond the show. She's an icon, she's a legend, she is the moment, and we are, of course, past the point of no return here with this one. That's right, we're again taking a dip into the cool, refreshing waters of Miss Darien Lake. Welcome back. Mm, thank you, it's so nice to be back. Oh, it's about damn time. I know, truly. I mean, I'm sure you have seen people calling for Darian on All Stars for like years. Yes, yes, usually with pitchforks outside my house. <laughs> calling for me, <laughs> get down here. I'm like, they must want me back on the show. Sending me gifts in the mail, just parts of themselves, you know. Limbs? Um, yeah, or, you know, turds. Um, I mean, Katya oh. has gotten a foot before on a red carpet. Has so. she really? Yeah. Oh, somebody gave her a, a freeze-dried foot on the on a red carpet. And she mm. posed with a picture. So you know, everybody loves a snack. These red carpets, they go <laughs> long time. You really need something to snack on. Yeah. So I get it. Understand. And that's it. That's the interview. Cut the cameras. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. You know, I love uh, European chocolates. So <laughs> if somebody wants to give me some of those, I'm all down for that. It really is truly lovely to see you back. I'm very excited to see what you do on the season. Is this the mm -hmm. first time you've ever been asked to come back? It's one of the times that I said yes. What made now like the right time, do you it, think? You know, it's back? always about timing. It's always about, you know, timing and chemistry and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can't put the same type of people all in the same season. You know, it's sort of like Steel Magnolias you wouldn't have like, you know, eight Truvies, it doesn't work. You know, you need that blend of the Weezes and the Truvy and the Malins and, you know, Shelby's. So you need all that to, to balance it out. So I understand it's like, sometimes it takes a little more time. How do you think you approach this season differently than your original season? Well, there are a lot of things that you look at during your original season that was, you know, so long ago and times have changed and you have to sort of evolve and all that stuff. And like, I know a lot of people were thinking like, oh, Tatiana, she was so far ago. And like, you know, how is she gonna keep up? I'm like. I'm not in a chamber, just like <laughs> sealed. Like we grow as entertainers and we learn new things and, and try and uh, strengthen some of our weaknesses, whatever that might be. And, and you don't even realize like, you know, with every single winner, you get a new sort of like infinity stone. You know what I'm saying? You get like somebody who's amazing at comedy, amazing at acting, amazing at fashion. And so all these things are like, you gotta do that too. And that too, and that, you know, so you have to completely build yourself and build your brand to be really well-rounded so that you can sort of take on all those wonderful characteristics of being a, a drag queen who's going to win All Stars 8, AS8, AS8. Ass yes, ass I'm getting eight. my ass eight. <laughs> I just put that together. Yeah, no, yeah, ass eight. That's how that's how I'm calling it. Ass eight. That's officially the name of yeah. the season. I mean, who I... doesn't want ass eight? You know, <laughs> I want my ass eight. So, did you see the White Lotus season one? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. An Emmy for that scene alone. So good. Now, you famously introduced yourself back on season six as being 24 years old. Have, are you are you 25 on All Stars 8 now? No, because it's been like nine years. So you can do math. 24 <laughs> plus nine is 32. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. I, I'm not good at math either. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. I mean, it's a Regents diploma. You know, I don't know. So. Well, with you back in the mix, I have to ask, who on the All Stars 8 cast inherited the infamous Ben De La Creme grudge from season six? Oh, the Ben De La Creme grudge. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea who that is. Um, no, um, <laughs> no, I'm really, uh, grudges, that's so funny. It's it's all what was perceived. You know, yeah. you have one day where you have a fight with your sister and it gets dragged out to, you know, whatever, so. I'm just teasing you. I know that it's not a, a real thing. No, it's 100% real. <laughs> to this day, we write each other nasty notes and slide it under each other's doors. No, it's um, never had a problem. We were like, wow, that was, okay, cool. So, yeah, no, no, nobody really. Um, no, I just only have it with former winners. <laughs> You have a memento from the season that I you took, do right? Have that a involves Ben Delacroix. Yes, they said like, you know, what did you take from the set? And I don't steal because I am a rule follower, and so you know, I wasn't stealing hearts. Um, but Ben Delacroix gave me a little gift and stuff after my read during the reading challenge, and so <laughs> I said she reminded me of a Russian doll, full of herself, <laughs> you know. And of course, she made me this 
with her face on it so I could keep it and enjoy it. And, and of course, learn the colors because I am a dummy. So, you know, and then, oh, this one might have a little, um, it may have been inside me, but um, yes, it was. And so, yeah. Do the smell test, yeah. Yeah, well, good. Pass it the test. Smells like pork. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's why I use sugar and vinegar douche because my boyfriend likes to eat sweet and sour pork. <laughs> but yeah, no, so she gave that to me, you know, as, as a fun and a joke and all that mm -hmm. stuff or whatever. And she gave it to me again at the reunion. So you got to see that. Um, it's just, it's fun and it's enjoyable. And like, I love to save things and mementos because, you know, um, you know, I'm sure I'm probably gonna die soon. So everything goes up in value, including my merchandise. So please buy my merch. It goes up in value soon. Well, in all seriousness, I do want to talk to you about season six. The whole it's, thing was it's, serious. It's, oh, the, of okay. course, of course. Yeah. Um, it, it's season six is regarded as one of the best seasons in uh, of all time. Thanks in part to you, of course. I mean, is that a lot of pressure then? Do you think heading into All Stars representing a season that also gave us, in addition to yourself, like Bianca, Adore, Courtney, and uh, Mandela Cram, and you know, uh, Lagandra Stranja. I, I mean, everybody is so legendary. And what about what a battle to go up against those girls and. And, um, and come up, you know, towards the top. And so it's such an honor. And But the thing is, is that it, it shows that so many of us, no matter where you place, have this honor um, bestowed upon us where you might have had one bad day and that took you out. So you can have so much more, you know, and you can get all the way to the top again. So, you know, it's it's um, it's a wonderful thing to, to feel that and like get excited about it. And, you know, you've already been through it a little bit. You've already worn down some of the, the spots where you think you can slide in on a home plate, oh, something sports reference. Um, but no, it's like you feel like, okay, I got this. Your your confidence is better and all that stuff. So, you know, it's great to, to be back in the, in the game, you know, and back in the ring fighting for a More purse. Sports references. Yeah. Oh, this is ESPN. Exactly. Um, did you, how did this dynamic of this group compare to the dynamic on season six? This dynamic is interesting for me and I think also for Kasha Davis yes. because we are uh, um, just a smidgen older than some of the other girls. Also drag sisters. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, and so or like drag aunties to, mm -hmm. to some of them as well. And so it, it is a different mix and like we had such a, an amazing camaraderie during season six that I still love all those girls so much and, and still little things will remind me of like Jocelyn and they're always so close to my heart and everything and I'm a very like in the moment kind of person so like when I'm here with you I'm your friend all that stuff whatever but when we walk away I'm like I don't know who that was um <laughs> it's I don't know what it is it's, it's sort of like the the closeness really helps me being in the moment with people and hang out with them like I'll hang out with somebody every single day as long as they call me you know this this group um we have that camaraderie as well you know even though we're all different sorts of walks of life and we get to sort of see like oh honey I used to do that <laughs> too. and they're like oh you did I'm like yeah mama used to be real <laughs> nuts I still am one of the things that I think people loved about you so much in your original season is you were of course a lip sync assassin mm. you were so good when you hit a stage and fans love it there are a lot of actually a lot of lip sync assassins on this season of all stars yeah, so yeah. what does that mean in terms of what we'll see on stage in terms of lip syncs like what can you tease I know I think that's so exciting about all stars eight you know getting your ass eight um is that we really have so many lip sync assassins i mean magnolia hasn't been seen since i lip synced against her so i guess technically i'm the only actual assassin <laughs> so it's great because not all of us are fashion queens or comedy queens and acting queens and all that stuff or whatever or performance queens and you know even you look at me and you think like oh she's gonna but Stage presence, darling. There's something that comes with, you know, paying your dues and, and performing and getting out there and grabbing that microphone and being pushed out on stage, you know, that, that you can't get from just posting a pretty picture right. online. These other girls also amazing assassins and it's, it's great to see like what we're gonna go up for, you know, especially when we're in the top and lip syncing for our legacy. I love that you took it one step further and it's not just assassin anymore. Like you actually, it's like murder, Magnolia. It's just Absolutely. murder. Absolutely, it's murder, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's a mercy killing really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, 
know, I do love the point of no return lip sync. I mean, you probably hear about it all the time, but I love that when you're just taking the dollars oh, from the yeah. ghosts in exactly. the crowd. It's so wonderful. Uh -huh. Did you go into that lip sync? Like, was that a trick that you were uh, no, thinking it was just you were all the, do? off the top of my head. I'm like, uh -huh. what am I gonna do during a dance break? I'm not gonna take my clothes off or do a death drop, dip, whatever, splat. And I think it was also because it was the second time that I was lip syncing for my life, and so I was just like, oh, thank you. This is what I normally do during my demo. I, I take money. Thank you. Thank you. And especially that it just really made Rue cackle and everything. That yeah. she was like, I got it. Mm -hmm. Some other people were like, I thought she was like serving herself some stuff from the buffet. Oh, I'm like, that? that could be too. So that was some of the people online because you know a lot of other countries don't do tipping culture. True. You know, um, we in America love that interaction. Yeah. A lot of the people who are sitting in the audience want to feel part of the show. And so that's why it's fun to get them interactive with the money and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they give you a big bill, you check to see its <laughs> validity and make sure it's got the stripe in it and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, make sure it's real. Like, oh, thank you for the 50. <laughs> yep, it's real. Not Monopoly money. Yeah. Did you, in the moment when Rue was having that reaction, like, could you could you see or tell that Rue was having like that big oh, of a reaction in the moment? Oh, completely, 100%. Yeah, because we're not that far from her. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, she's laughing, cackling, she was slapping the desk and all that stuff. <laughs> And also Leah Remini and oh, Michelle, they were just so into it. Like every little move, they're like, oh, yeah. And they were, you know, and then after the show had aired, uh, Expose, who sang the song, yeah. they made a little video for me that you can find on YouTube mm -hmm. of them being like, Darian, we love you. We love that move. We're stealing it for our co for our concerts. So it was a, it was really great to be recognized by somebody who, when I was a little kid, you know, turning on the radio and listening to this, I was like, oh, I love this song, you know? I'm going to go buy it on cassette tape. And then you promptly sued them for using your move and, in their shows. <sighs> no, no, not at all. No, I let them have it. I let them have it. Because no matter what, how many times they do it, people in the audience will be like, that's a Darien Lake. That's Darien move. Lake. That's a Darien. That's Lake a Darien Lake move. move. Yeah, it's like when Adore said that, like I stole her move during like the finale mm -hmm. thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Uh, honestly, I wasn't watching her perform. I was trying to hoist my <laughs> into a director's chair. So yeah, good times. Great. Yeah. No, because you are. But then you know, even Rube did it during the video, so it was like yeah. anyway. So go ahead. No, that's, because you are a master of this art of lip syncing. Who do you? Th I, I'm curious to know who you think had some of the best lip syncs since your season and who maybe had some of the worst lip syncs since your season? Oh my God. Well, I mean, since my season, especially the, um, the meh lip sync with Dax against uh, Layla McQueen Layla, yeah. doing I Will Survive, one of the most glorious gay songs it that it, I know oh, made my heart hurt. Might have been that or my diet rich in bacon grease. You know, there's so much that I was just like, oh. And then some of the other things that I've, I've seen queens like dancing and stuff, but they're dead in the face. I'm like, honey, like I know Botox and filler is fun, but <laughs> you should still be able to move your face and have expression and you're just, I don't know, like, okay, you danced well, but. Dead in the face. Dead. Doesn't work. Nothing for me. I don't, that's just me. That's what I prefer for drag. Mm -hmm. And I know everybody loves something else. So, you know, you don't yuck somebody else's yum. There you go. That's what they say. That's yes, good advice. So um, I'm trying to think of other things that, are, you know, I mean, Monet Exchange, you know, the false split and everything, and especially because she's like, oh, I'm going to do it. And, you know, those those little moments really get me so excited about drag and performing and stuff. The, you know, the unexpected things that you throw in there. It's just, ugh, you know. I think one of my favorites with yeah. Monet is I love that moment with Monet, but also when she takes the pussycat wig off oh, to yes. reveal the same pussycat yes, wig underneath. Exactly. The genius. That is yep. a genius. That's so good. Mm -hmm. So good. So many of those wonderful moments that have been uh, part of Drag Race history and, yeah. and that I've seen copied later at other drag shows mm -hmm. and stuff because, you know, that's what all of us drag queens are anyway. You know, we see something we see and get inspired by it. But a lot of people do that. You know, designers or hair artists and all that stuff or whatever, they get inspired by others, which is great. And it's fantastic to see um, us sharing and not gatekeeping information mm -hmm. and making it your own. Yeah. That's the thing too. It's like we could all, every last one of us girls could come out in the same exact dress and look 100% different. Mm -hmm. I also want to talk about your drag family because I mean, obviously, I mean, your mm -hmm. sisters with Mrs. Kasha Davis, who's yeah. Also on the season, she mm -hmm. said some nice things about how you helped each other prepare. Mm -hmm. I thought that was great. But you're also, you're both sisters with Pandora, yes. um, who famously had a rough run on All Stars 1. So what do you remember about her reaction coming home from that season? And then did you help her prepare again for All Stars right. 6? We're supposed to keep it incredibly secret. We're not supposed to tell anybody because anybody will uh, 
you know, leak the knowledge. So we don't say anything to anybody. It's just a secret between us and the producers. I play by the rules. I'm a rule follower, you know? Of course. Um, of course. But I will say though that after um, season one of All Stars, she came back and it just, she really, she was broken in a way. It was sort of, you know, she was this Miss Congeniality and then it sort of turned into something else where she's a very introverted person, even though, you know, we have to do this every extroverted thing. And so when you're not talking or engaging in the in the correct way, she sort of clams up and yeah. people are like, she doesn't get that look off her face, I'm gonna smack it. I'm like, no, it's just, you need to start asking the right questions to get her involved. And then she also is a very sensitive person that will read a thousand wonderful comments and the one negative one, she'll focus on that one. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm just like, F you, I hope you die alone in a dirty bed, you <laughs> I don't give a They're like, kill yourself. I'm like, honey, I've been trying, <laughs> you know? I'm like, I don't care. I've been through so much in my real life. You know, like back in my day, we didn't throw insults online. We threw bricks at each other. And so for her, it, it, it really have broken her. And then she gets in her head and, you know, and you know, if you try and sort of find other ways to self-medicate yourself, whether it's, you know, alcohol or, you know, just lying in bed doing nothing. And then you wallow in that and it becomes a very dark place and it's hard to get out of, especially Kasha. She will see something that Pandora texts at four in the morning and say, like, go the f to bed. You know, you're tired, whatever. And Kasha's already been awake and down like four pots of coffee at that point. <laughs> She doesn't sleep. <sighs> yeah. And I will say though, Pandora has been nothing but lovely in the interviews that I've done with her. Yeah, and yeah, I just, yeah. I really know. Lousy in I... bed, but so nice. <laughs> I'm just kidding. My editor, Jillian, who's a big fan of yours, she, when we were preparing for this, mm -hmm. she dug through the archives mm -hmm. and she found a video of you and Pandora on Ricky Lake. Yes. Um, from year, from the yeah, early yeah. 90s. So how did that happen? So like you were on reality TV right, before right, reality right. TV was a thing. Like how yeah. did that happen and what do you remember from yeah. filming well, that Well, really it's none of your business. Um, <laughs> Even though it was on a public television show. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. No, um, what happened was, <laughs> you know, we would watch trash TV and stuff and, and she called me on the phone and she's like, so I'm watching Ricky Lake with my boyfriend. I'm like, okay, he had a job. But she was like, so they're doing a topic and I think it'd be fun, like we could get on TV, like maybe we'll be famous. But the topic is like, get a grip, you're too fat to be a drag queen. And I don't think this, cause I love you and all that stuff or whatever, but I think it'd be fun. We could get on TV, it'd be a great thing. And I was like, oh yeah, let's sign up. We're gonna be famous, we're gonna be on TV. You know, it's gonna be awesome. And so, you know, they called me and I charmed the f out of them. So they were like, sign, seal, deliver, let's get you down here and stuff. And I was like, first class. And they were like, yes. And then they were trying to get us to like, you know, well, your friend wants to say this, how do you feel? I'm like, oh, that how dare she? Oh, I'm offended. You know, we had to sort of play that up and everything. And it was great doing it because like, the whole audience loved all the big girls and they were sort of mad at like the skinny girls. It was fun. They were all on our side uh -huh. and stuff and it was a great time and we had so much fun. Yeah. So. so it was a drag race acting challenge before drag race acting it really challenges. Was. It really was, yeah. So it was it was a good time. I even have a t-shirt still. Really? It says I was a guest on Ricky Lake. Oh my God, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I know, I'm saving that one, so. You know. That's great. Yeah, we'll go in the archives. One thing that I'm asking mm -hmm. everybody in this cast that I'll ask you to, and you cannot say yourself for the yeah. answer. Um, oh, who, we good? Yeah, you know, <laughs> sometimes, you know, they jump up on my guests and I'm like, down boys. Um, control them, like my control dogs. them. But yeah, it's, um, um, you know, it's it's sitting down and drag. That's things you don't want to do. You don't want to sit down and drag. You don't want to like eat when you're in drag. I was going to say sex, but sometimes that can be fun. Sometimes people do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Please, go ahead. No, Sorry. no worries, no worries. Uh, so who do you think is going to surprise people the most on All Stars 8 in terms of like their glow up? You know, you think La La Ree, because like last time we saw her, she was, the you bag. know, like... <sighs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, at least it's biodegradable. So I give her props for that. You know, it wasn't plastic. Oh, thinking of the environment. Thinking yes. of the environment. She's an environmental queen. What a good twist she on is. that story. Yes. She is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so on the runway and in glow up, it's, it's La La, you think? I would, I would say, you know, because it's like last we saw her, you know, it's that, that um, tragic moment. But I mean, how memeable did it become? And people were dressing like La La Ree in the bags for Halloween Two and I saw it row. and stuff. Two years in a row. Uh -huh. I know, it was awesome. Especially because it was so flammable. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful note to end on, Darian. It is always oh. a pleasure. Thank you so much Thank for you. being here. And I cannot wait to see what you do on the season. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Thanks, everybody, and stay Strip. tuned for what? What? We still going? We can still go. No, you, you, you're fine. <laughs> stay tuned for more with the cast of All Stars Eight.